Netrux is another one of those Linux distributions that you've probably never heard of. It's gone through a number of changes, but now it seems to be a fancy pants cute KDE not KDE distro with its own take on all things cute in KDE. Basically, it's the cute version of elementary OS. <laughs> now it's based on Ubuntu, and it'll make more sense when we start delving into the desktop. The installer isn't anything you haven't already seen before, but it does hint some of that sweet Nitrux style. They call their desktop the NX desktop, and it's a little bit more than a heavily styled KDE desktop. You can really see the NX desktop shine through on the login screen and the splash screen, and when we make our way to the desktop, look! It's Pantheon with way more colors. And much like elementary OS, pretty much all of the core apps are specific to NX desktop, such as the terminal. Unfortunately, I couldn't figure out an easy way to zoom or even copy and paste into this thing, so eh. A fresh install weighs in at 6.2 gigabytes in here at idle. Nitrux is using about 900 megabytes of memory. So this is Nitrux with the NX desktop. What do y'all think of it? It's based on KDE Frameworks 5.18.5 and uses Qt version 6.14.2. And honestly, it feels and looks quite a bit like a KDE desktop. The top bar is very similar to Pantheon's or maybe Ubuntu Budgies actually with a Raven-like panel off to the side. It uses KDE's Discover to keep everything updated and has the good old Latte Dock at the bottom. The launcher up at the top left is called Simple Launcher, I think, and it looks and behaves an awful lot like Pantheon's launcher. When you've got a bunch of windows open, or even like two windows open, it does this little popping and hiding thing when you grab them from the background. There's probably a name for this animation, but I can't think of it. It's really cool looking, and I don't think I've seen this animation executed so well before. One of Nitrux's original claim to fame was that it was an app image first distro, but I didn't see any popular app images pre-installed or anything. The itch.io client was pre-installed, and that's pretty cool. Not all of the apps shipped with Nitrux as part of the NX desktop. For example, MPV is used for video playback and Firefox is the web browser. I liked them a lot when I first started playing with it, but once I like used them and tried to do, I guess, more advanced stuff, I realized they're all really rough around the edges, especially index, which is the file browser. I had major difficulties copying and pasting folders and files, and you can't open a terminal by right-clicking like you can on most file browsers, which is kind of annoying, especially when I'm having problems copying files. Oh, and by the way, all of these NX apps appear to be original, not forks of existing KDE apps. The project behind all of this stuff is called Maui or Maui Kit. I'm not exactly sure how it's related to the NX team, but it's like probably the same people. <laughs> and it's like an alternate take on KDE applications. I think it's really cool. When we look over at NeoFetch, we see that this is Nitrix 1.2.9 with kernel version 5.6 OEM, whatever that's supposed to mean. Uses the Z shell 5.8. The desktop is the NX desktop, but here it's showing up as Plasma with KWIN with a Nitrux theme and love icons. Samba and Network Discovery worked kind of with the stream top being discovered, but somehow nothing else. If you remember the Mint episode where literally every computer on my network showed up here? I don't know where they are, but okay. Bluetooth didn't work at all. This seemed to be adapter or driver related because when I'm trying to get the adapter working and connect to my phone, if I open dMessage, I see a bunch of Bluetooth related errors. So maybe Nitrix ships with some bad drivers or something. And printer support wasn't that great either with my printer not being installed or detected by default. It was detected in the printer thing, but I needed to find the drivers for it. It's just most distros set this up automatically anymore. Index refused to even try to open the encrypted internal drive, and it wouldn't open the SD card in an existing Index instance, so I had to open a new one to access the removable drives. That's a nasty bug. All of the archive formats were supported, and all of the media files were supported, both audio and visual, so no troubles there. And to no surprise to anyone, all of the app images worked beautifully, though it didn't prompt me to install them, which I was half expecting. And flat packs and snaps are supported out of the box with help from Discover. Unfortunately, 32-bit stuff from the repos is not super well supported. I wasn't able to install Steam from the repos even after enabling the 32-bit stuff. Luckily, we've got Flatpak, which has Steam. So once I got that sorted out, I fired up Broforce, which ran great. 
The NVIDIA drivers seem to be pre-installed, but the NVIDIA settings app wasn't, which is a little odd. Even though Broforce is a 2D retro shooter thing, it has surprisingly high system requirements, and as we can see here, it's running just fine. XCOM 2 is next, and the game defaulted to the low graphics presets, but I don't know, I think it's running pretty darn good here. Probably could have bumped it up to medium, honestly, but there weren't any issues at all. And Seven Days to Die is the last game we'll look at, and it ran well enough. There wasn't any stuttering or major lag that would help a zombie catch up to you, so that's good. So when I first got my hands on Nitrix, I was excited to see an alternative KDE distro, the way that Elementary OS is an alternative to, uh, I guess GNOME doesn't have a distro, but you know what I'm trying to say. But after I started using it, I realized that Nitrix is super rough around the edges. Bloody, one might even say. Everything about the distro felt sluggish. Almost everything. The games actually ran just fine. So the sluggishness is definitely a desktop thing. It's not the way that the distro is configured because then it should show up in the games, right? Every single app took at least one second to launch and sometimes even more. This is an SSD, folks. There is no excuse for apps to launch slowly like that. The settings and configuration for apps is weird too, like sometimes they show up in the global menu bar, but other times they're embedded in a little hamburger menu, and the panels usually have a bunch of switches that are honestly ambiguous. I don't know, I didn't like it. I love the colors and the overall style of the distro, but practically everything wound up rubbing me the wrong way. So between the poor desktop performance and honestly half-baked apps, I would watch for the next release of Nitrux before you think about seeking your teeth into it for your desktop.